got that weekend feeling. Why? Because it's another What a Shout, brought to you by The Racing Post and our sponsors, Bet365. Great to be back with you this weekend. More Grade 1 action for you. Tingle Creek down at Sandown. Is it the greatest jumping test out there? Those famous railway fences will be covering two races for you there. And we're back over the national fences. Happy days, the Beecher and the Grand Sefton, of course, on Saturday as well. There's some decent races there. Delighted to say, and listen, this is exactly how it should be. We've got our first owner on What a Shout. And if we were going to go for anyone, who could it possibly be this week? Just a big hitter himself, John Hales, owner of Politolog, the current champion chaser, lining up, bidding to win the Tingle Creek again. John, great to have you on. Thank you. Great to be here. I think it, you were, at one point, you were about five to two to get Skype worked out, John. But, but thanks to your grandson, Harry, last night, you quickly went into twos on and it was a doddle in the end. Yes, I've got a clue to start with. <laughs> but we've got you, John, and you're going to be have some forthright opinions, no doubt. We've got Graham Robway in the studio as well, back <laughs> to give his opinions. Good to be back, yeah, Good as to always. see you, G. We were arguing a little bit before and about who was the biggest Azerti at fan, which is, of course, one of John's famous horses over the years. We'll talk to John about that in a second, but I think it's me. Well, I didn't think I would ever find anyone who could rival me for the biggest fan of Azerti, but... Just as I mentioned it as we were walking in, you, you said that you were the biggest fan and I was I was taken aback. So we're going to have to have a little competition as to see, uh, you know, who followed the horse the most. And of course, while we were bickering, John came on and he said he was looking at him outside his window. So of course, we've got Azertiup's biggest fan with us right now. How is the old boy, John? He's absolutely fine. I, I remember in the summer, the wife put him from a small field into a bigger field and he just took off. I swear he was as quick as ever, but he must be 18, 19 now. We had that He's very good. He's in great condition. We had that golden period, John, didn't we? Talking of the Tingle Creek this week, Moscow Flyer, World Chief, and Azertiup, of course. That very famous race where they all charged up the hill together. We'll get John's thoughts on the Tingle Creek. Of course, John, just a word about yourself. Um, it, it, you know, a very successful businessman. I should say you're still very much involved with Golden Bear Toys, which is your company, of course. Uh, and it all began really, John, with one man, didn't it? All those years ago, who, who in the 90s swept all before him. Yes, yes. He, he started it and uh, it was he that got me more and more involved in racing. A truly great horse and wonderful memories. We did a lovely feature in the post on Wednesday, Julian Muscat of John. If you do go into your archives, you can find that on the website. Go and check it out. John talks about how he really got into it. Uh, so some very famous horses over the years. Would it be right, John, to say that probably your most famous horse now is Neptune Colonge, your 2012 Grand National winner? Yes, and deservedly so. I mean, um, he was a tremendous horse. Um, he... He never knew when he was beaten. And I remember as yesterday, the 2012 Grand National, he, he just wouldn't give up. He was determined not to be beaten. It's a great thing for a, a horse to have. And it's, you can find that great in many, many races. Fantastic. John, let's talk a little bit about the current pandemic. Of course, Politolog gave you your eighth Cheltenham Festival winner when he took out the champion chase under Harry Skelton. <laughs> Watch back the replay of that. You'll see John and his grandson, Harry, celebrating in no uncertain terms. It was a tough year for you before that, John. You had a stroke. So all the emotion we saw coming out of you there. But all of a sudden, racing stopped, John. You wanted to go back up to entry again because Neptune Colonge, you take to every Thursday. Am I right in thinking you took him to see the kids at Alderhay Hospital? Oh, yes. Uh, apart from last year when everything was cancelled, um, uh, I take him on the Friday uh, to see the children. Uh, he's absolutely wonderful with them. The children, the, the doctors um, let the children out. And uh, it, it's quite emotional because um, they all give him polos and he licks them out of their hands and just to see the smile on these children's faces, makes it all so worthwhile. There we go, absolutely. Listen, nothing better than that. Is a, one of the closest finishes, obviously we had Tiger Roll, didn't we, when he won his first national grand. That was a, that was a short head photo, but 
that Neptune Collange. We didn't know, did we, for minutes and minutes afterwards who, mm, who no. had won. That was a, a real close one, wasn't it? But well, what horse he was, Neptune Collange, you know, because not only did he win a Grand National course, he was third. In in my opinion, probably the best Gold Cup run this century. Uh, the one, of course, won by Denman, in which Corto Star was second, Neptune Collange was third. Um, and I, re I remember, I think, later on that season, I was at Punchestown when, when he went on to win the Punchestown uh, equivalent, the Punchestown Gold Cup. So he was a, a real grade one horse. And to win the Grand National off that sort of weight as well, it was a big weight he was carrying. Yeah, it was a superb performance. Yeah, John, of course, owns, owns uh, Golden Bear Toys, which is the very famous toy company. And I said to my son yesterday, uh, Sebastian, my five-year-old, I said, I've got the guy who's responsible for In the Night Garden on. And it, it's John Howes. And my son was like, really? What, Eagle Piggle? I'll I, I tell you what, Graham, you know about a bit about this, don't you? <laughs> we, we entered the hot sauce competition at the same time, didn't we, with our kids? But basically... I said that my kids would never, ever have this in the night garden on. I used to go around people's houses who had kids, you know, I was late coming to having children. And this in the night garden was on this craziness. The moment my son first clapped eyes on it, Iggle Piggle, the Linky Nonks, all that sort of thing. It's genius. Turns out that Je uh, that Der Jacobin narrates it. It's um, amazing. Well, I've lost count of how many times I've been singing, yes, my name is Iggle Piggle. <laughs> To my kids, so uh, yeah. Who thought what a shout could ever go down this road? But there you are, John. You've given us much more than just national winners. And what a great time talking about Eagle Pig on Mackle Packer and in the Night Garden to bring in from Bet Three Six Five, waiting in the wings, Pat Cooney. Yeah, good morning. I have to put those in my tracker, I think, and follow them from now on. <laughs> You've got a question for John, Pat, from your yes. social media team. Yes, good morning, John. Uh, so many uh, well well known horses you've owned in the past, but we're looking ahead, and we want to ask John. Which of your up-and-coming prospects are you most excited about this season, please? Uh, I'd put two. Uh, protector at one. I think he's quite highly rated novice now after two runs over fences. Um, and the other one, I would pick Claire Danae. Um, both of those horses are actually trained um, by Dan Skelton um, and um, uh, Paul, Paul Nichols, as two other youngsters that really haven't, Mon Morale is very promising. He won a three-year-old at Oak no, no Toy. Uh, he, he's run over here. He's, he, he, he won. Um, so we need to see a little bit more of him, but Paul Nichols has also got this horse, Mon Morale, and um, he, he's got every chance to be a, a very, very good horse. Let's have a quick word on Protect Track, John, if we can. That was some demolition job he served up at, at Cheltenham, wasn't it? At, you know, at, at the Open meeting, in the race that Azerti had won for you all those years ago. Where's he going to go next, John? Have you got a plan mapped out? Um, no, I'm still waiting. He's about um, three weeks away, coming up to Christmas, from his next run. Dan said he's looking for the appropriate, we, 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 appropriate race. We're going to stay at two and a half mile. We've, we've agreed a program for him. He's going to stay at um, two and a half mile this year. He won't try three mile until next season. Uh, which you, you've got a dream in this game, and the plan is, all being well, he'll have a crack at the King George in a year's time. And who knows about March 2022? So that's basically the outline plan for him. Yes, John, we all know you want that Gold Cup. Absolutely, we all know about that. That's Protector at them. Gave him a racing post rating of 160 just before we move on. He looks like the big danger to Envoy Allen, doesn't he, in the marsh come March time. Paul Kitty a couple of weeks ago said, do not be afraid of one horse. Protector at is the one to see him off. Yeah, he looks a good prospect, doesn't he? Um, yeah, Envoy Allen does look very good, but he's only had two runs, I think, over fences and really not had a massive test yet. So it'll be interesting to see uh, if Protectorate can put it up to him. I'm sure there'll be others out there as well who'll be gunning for Envoy LN this year. Mm, exciting times. Exciting show coming up for you. Let's have a look exactly what we have got. Hot topic. Go on, Holly. Well, we'll be talking about Holly Doyle and her, uh, 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 her sporting nomination that has been all over the news this week. We'll be having a look at racing clues. What did we see last weekend? We'll be previewing the big races. We'll go up to the beach. Uh, we'll go to Sandown. We'll give you some big calls in the studio. And, of course, the weekend winners. If you've not signed up to our sponsors, Bet365 now remains a great time to do so because the referral code is still out there. Type in SHOUT365. Minimum deposit of £5 for up to 100 bet credits. Terms and conditions apply.
Hot topic time then. Go on, Holly. Unbelievable scenes this week. Holly Doyle capping off an unfathomable 2020, let's face it, with a BBC Sporting Personality of the Year award. So AP McCoy Graham won it in 2010. The last nomination for racing was when he was nominated again in 2013. First of all, your thoughts about this? Well, yeah, she, she definitely deserves it, I think. Uh, she's been one of the outstanding jockeys in Britain this year, if not the outstanding jockey, hasn't she? I mean, yeah. who can forget, was it the five or six timer she had that day at Windsor when she had the bookies running? It was a bit like when uh, when Frankie de Tori used to get on one of those roles. All for different trainers. Yeah, absolutely brilliant. And then, of course, we were in the studio um, for another show when she uh, won the... Um, uh, the first two races on on British Champions Group Day, one. pretty much the big uh, the, the biggest day in, in British racing, certainly one of them. Yeah. Um, at Ascot, and she stole the show before uh, before her, her other half then came along and and rivaled her. But uh, yeah, what a story it's been, and uh, great for racing, and great to obviously have a, a woman as well as um, uh, representing the sport. Yes, uh, the great British racing guys, uh, the guys and uh, our producers reminded me this week. They ran a campaign saying just jockeys. And Holly was very prominent in that, saying just call us jockeys. I don't want to be called a female rider. I'm just another rider. I think we can agree, can't we? She is definitely riding as well as anyone this year. It wouldn't matter if she was an alien. She's just riding <laughs> remarkably well, isn't she? Yeah, no, absolutely. She is. But what what her being female does prove is that racing is a sport where, where women and men can really compete on a level footing. And there aren't many sports where you can say that. And I think that's a really big plus for racing. Look at John Hales' view on this then. John, we've got some top female jump jockeys as well, haven't we? Rachel Blackmore, of course, Bryony Frost, who you all know well. What have you made of Holly Doyle this year? Oh, very impressive. Um, it's great to see a lady come forward like that in the sport. Uh, a lot of people will say that um, ladies are at a disadvantage in a driving finish, physicality and all of that. So I think that makes their achievements even more impressive. Will you um, give her well, a ride in the bumper, John? If we can find one oh. for the bumper. Oh, yeah, anytime. <laughs> Fantastic stuff. Okay, Pat Coonley, let's come to you. Now, Lewis Hamilton, a lot of people will think he's an absolute shoe in for this. I've got some boys that I know at the Racing Post who do rather well looking at this sporting personality, spotty market, as they call it. And they told me he's no shoe in whatsoever. I think, you know, 22 to 1. Unfortunately, there's no each way terms, but you have got a market, Pat. Yeah, at the moment we're three to one on Lewis Hamilton, Ronnie O'Sullivan six, Jordan Henderson eight, Tyson Fury ten, and Holly Doyle twenty two. So she's wrapped up the top female her personality of the year, hasn't she? So I, I think she's uh, she's you know she's just uh, had a wonderful time of it, and I think in a non Olympic year, I think the BBC must have been thinking, you know, where where are we going to have a female uh, personality? And then to Holly Doyle, what I can tell you about Holly Doyle. Normally, the first question every Saturday is, uh, what's Frankie on? It's always, what's Holly on? Because if she rides the first winner, there's loads and loads of multiples. She is definitely the Saturday jockey that the public absolutely love. And, you know, those two winners that she rode at, at uh, Ascot on Champions Day, that, that was quite a nerve-wracking day for us all. And we were relieved as at the third one beat. So there's no denying she's hugely popular within the sport. She goes to Hong Kong, of course, for the Jockey Challenge over there, the International Jockey Challenge. Could some offers be coming her way if she does a winner or two over there? Unbelievable scenes, isn't it? This has been a, a tough year, but an absolute burning star for us. Absolutely, yeah. It's been well, an extremely tough year for all sports, not just for racing, of course. But really, racing has come out of it fairly well, hasn't it? And, and to have someone like Holly uh, leading the way for us is, is great. Yeah, the BBC were down there filming this uh, week. And guess what? She had a three-timer at Wolverhampton, another winner the next day as well. Go on, Holly. Right then, racing clues from the past weekend. Superb stuff, wasn't it? The old Hennessy, the Ladbrokes Trophy at Newbury. And of course, Epiton, the champion hurdle winner, came back, does what she does best. One very impressive as well. Let's go to the Ladbrokes Trophy. Cloth cap. First time blinkers. Where did this come from? Uh, I'm not sure, but Tom Siegel saw it coming, didn't he? Yes. yes. <laughs> um, I I just always thought he was a bit of a strange horse because he always used to be held up, didn't he? And then come through travel well and not quite go through with it. And then, of course, this time they bounce him out in front, Tom Scudamore, and yeah, they didn't see which way he went. Yeah, first time blinkers, get him out. I guess the booking of Tom Scudamore, uh, d d doing that work, wait for the first time in, in a couple of years was a clue and how they were going to ride him as well. I had him down as a bit of a thinker as well. 
uh, form of the race just quickly before we move on to John? Well, I don't think that we're dealing with the sort of quality that we were dealing maybe when 10, 10 years ago or so, when this used to really almost always throw up a gold cup horse. In recent years, it doesn't seem to have been quite as high, does it? It's more turned into more of just a big handicap. But don't get me wrong, a really great big handicap and a fantastic spectacle. But um, I don't think we saw a gold cup horse win the race or finish in the places. If we did see one, it might well be horse that didn't finish. Because Vindication was travelling quite mm. well, wasn't he, when he came down off a big weight. And he had obviously previously finished second behind Surname uh, at um, Weatherby. Yeah. I, I think that if, if there was a gold cup also in it, it might be the one that fell. Unbelievable, yeah. Uh, so we've got a national horse now. They wanted to get him up in the weights, didn't they? John Ailes, let's come to you on this. What is it about these front runners? They seem to be absolutely dominating these big staying handicaps. Well, a lot depends on the conditions, doesn't it? Um, if... It's very difficult in racing on very soft ground to make up the ground on a run to the line. It's very difficult. If you get five lengths, ten lengths back, it's very, very difficult on winter ground to make that up at the end of a race. And I, I think people now are taking advantage of, of an opportunity to lead from the front and control the race. Um, and I've seen some wonderful uh, wins this, this season with precisely that tactic. Um, you're taking a gamble, but then again, for a lot of people, it's certainly paid off. Absolutely. Fantastic. Uh, Pat Cooney, let's come to you. Uh, Epitant, what happened to her price in the champion owner market? She was a bit special, albeit in a highly dramatic fighting fifth. Yeah, it was a strange race, wasn't it? But, uh, you know, you, you go by your eyes sometimes, and she was visually so impressive. She was giving up fitness, of course, uh, against So Royal, but uh, very, very impressive. I think she's around about six to four at the moment. And it's up to the likes of Go Goshen to say, look, here, what about me? Watch me come out and run. But so impressive. And it's very hard to deny her, her claims. And we go back to the mayor's allowance debate. You know, getting seven, it, it just seems such a big advantage to her. And she's come out and posted that impressive win on the board. To use a golfing term, she's definitely the clubhouse leader in the in the uh, champion hurdle betting. Yeah, she's going to take a lot of beating if she turns up sound. So all roads lead to Christmas again for the uh, for the Kempton Boxing Day showpiece there. And then she'll go to uh, the champion all being well. Fingers crossed we've got another star there. Uh, York Hill was remarkable, wasn't it? Talking about front running chases. Well, oh, <laughs> unbelievable scenes. York Hill. PFPP Sandy Thompson works his magic. Great to see. Never lose the faith, as they say, <laughs> Dave. Um, obviously, you know, this all really seemed to have baffled Willie Mullins, didn't he, um, towards the end of his career. Um, he completely lost his way for, 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 for Mullins, who obviously is, you know, one of the best around, if not the best. And then moved to, moved to Sandy Thompson, suddenly turns back the clock two years yeah. and, and, and becomes the, the you know, the, the good chaser that he was. But I think that the most interesting thing was the distance, wasn't he? He was always really a bit of a two and a half mile tear away <laughs> and then all of a sudden he runs over three miles at newcastle and goes along sweetly as anything yeah. found at the end it found was, at the yeah. end we're, we're, but then i suppose he was being challenged by watmore who who, <laughs> who has who, it was almost like a battle of two horses that, that uh, don't always uh, like to to put their uh, head in front but um oh, you know you take nothing away from your kill the, the great thing about racing of course is these great old horses that especially jump racing is that they can always find their level can't they and um, he was a grade one horse in his prime, no doubt about it, York Hill. This is obviously a massive drop in grade. He's come down a few runs in the, in the handicap. And at 66 to one, suddenly out of nowhere, yeah. there, it, there it is. Serious training performance from Sandy Thompson. Uh, Pat, Sunday in Ireland, there was something that really caught your eye there and some others as well. Another champion holder market took a ripple. Yeah, I mean, we had Envoy Allen win, didn't we? Honeysuckle win. But um, I think most visually impressive was the uh, the three-year-old juvenile hurdle, Zanair of Gordon Elliott, who won by a mile. Hugely impressive. And uh, I'm not one for, uh, you know, on the clock when it comes to jump racing, but you compare the distances and the times at that day, he put together a mighty performance. I and mean, we're five to one for the Triumph Hurdle. I thought, well, uh, that, that looks very short to me, but his stable companions are second and third and uh, their form just doesn't marry up to this fella. So again, we're waiting for something to come up from this side of the pond, but Zaniera Gordon Elliott, he looks like, uh, you know, the clock watchers fell in love with him, visually impressive. So uh, he looks the one at the moment in the triumph. Mm, Gordon Elliott's last triumph winner just happened to be Tiger Roll. We're sizzling up, aren't we, in the jump season. This weekend, it's about to get hotter. 
Time for a big race preview then. 1.30 up at Aintree. Delighted to be able to say this again. Oh, it's the Beecher Chase. 1.30. They brought it forward on the card. It is the feature. It is, we've seen national winners go and do it. We've got a two-time winner in Wart the Mill returning for the Walfords. James Best on. We've got Vieux Leon Rouge. I like him in the race. Last week, we had Ben Pauling on the show. He napped Lebroy, who now looks like he might go off favourite. Where is Graham Robway going to play? I like last year's second, Kimberlite Candy, who was second behind Walking the Mill, who obviously is going to be going for a for a hat trick, which would be quite some achievement, wouldn't it? I know it's not the Grand National, but it's over the Grand National fences. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I think that uh, Kimberlite Candy can reverse the places. Now, he's £16 higher than when he was second last year, but when you see him run at uh, Warwick uh, in January when he won the Classic Chase, he was so strong at the finish, he was just powering home, one by ten lengths. He's got a good record when fresh Kimberlite candy, so he'd definitely be right first time up. Um, and we know he goes over the fences. That mm. was his first attempt at the Grand National Fences last year, Kimberlite candy. So I think he can improve for that. Uh, I, yeah, I, I, I think he could win a national as well at some point. He was Mate, well fancy, wasn't he, for the, he what was, would have been this year's What would have been, yeah. Sadly, we missed out, didn't we? But even if it's not a Grand National, maybe it could be a Welsh or a Scottish or one of those. He's certainly a strong, strong stayer. I was running out some stats recently about Tom Lacey's runners. You know, and he's got an incredible record when they go up in trip. I think it's like w almost one in four over three mile plus uh, wins, basically. It's an incredible strike rate that he's got with staying, uh, staying horses and, and staying chasers alike. And um, yeah, I think you'll see a lot more from Kimberlite Candy when he goes up in trip as well. A trainer that applied his trade initially in the point field, of course. John, let's come to you on this. The Beecher. Uh, nine of the last ten have run previously over the... Um, national fences. Is, is that something that we must have? What, what sort of horse are we looking for? You've won a national. A natural jumper. I remember 2012, uh, Neptune Collins was very reluctant going down to the first. He really was. Uh, he was 37th jumping the uh, first fence. After he jumped the first fence, I think he realised, oh, these are a bit different. And from then on, he enjoyed every minute. He absolutely loved it. And he gave a jumping expedition. Now, that's a horse that's a national jumper who loved jumping those fences. And of course, the, the national fences are a real challenge. And in 2012, um, that was, the, I think, the last year before all the changes came in uh, to give more protection and safety for the horses, which is paramount. So you've got to have a natural jumper. Mm, okay, and one that stays as well. I think we're going, oh, to be, yeah. we're going to be looking at some gluey ground, aren't we? Pat Cooney, Ben uh, Pauling, we had him on last week, didn't we? He's run about 14s in the anti-post book. LeBroy, it's been a right old crunch on this, isn't there? Yeah, absolutely. And the form book gives him a good chance. I think he's on the same mark that he won at the Cheltenham Festival at uh, a couple of seasons ago. But we're sixth to field at the moment. Um, you can make a plausible case out for them all, can't you? I, I, I'm intrigued by two horses. I, I think uh, David Pike's Fear Leon Rouge, you just gave him a name check. I was, I was just, uh, I read an article the other day. He's run over in this race four times and in the Grand National four times. And he successfully jumped 202 fences over the Grand National fences. So I'm looking at him from, a, you know, our firm's going to go first four. Maybe some will be brave enough to go first five. I could see him hopping around being in the first five. Another one I like is number 14, Kustar Sivala. I'm just going for the, the soft ground angle, the lower weights. Ten stone four. Form figure's a bit ropey. Eight, three, seven, P5. But he is a Cheltenham Festival winner, trained by the very good Nick Williams. He could just uh, outrun his price as well, but uh, wide open. Yeah, hopefully what a shout followers if you're watching last week you've got Lebroy covered as well he's just a little bit short for me now Verlian Rouge absolutely all the way it's an informative beach chase we're back over the national fences is the national winner lurking in this year's edition let's go down to the Isha playground that is Sandown and it is the Henry VIII graded novice action it's going to be fast and furious all mankind in there he's only got one way of running for Dan Skelton, get out over you go. Hitman in there as well for Paul Nichols. Uh, of course, we've got El Dorado Allen for Colin Tizard and Robbie Powell. They've had a couple of big winners this week as well. Graham Robway, who wins? I think All Mankind will win. I was impressed with him when he won uh, on his chess debut at um, 
Warwick. Yeah. That's a really tough track to jump, isn't it, for a novice? It's in a, in a way a little bit like Sandown in the fact that they have those really long run of fences down the back straight. And at Sandown, they have obviously those seven down the back, including three railways. And I thought he flew them and he came home on the bridle, didn't he? It was quite a performance. Uh, the the runner-up was Zanza, wasn't it? And Zanza came out and won a, a handicap chase last week hmm. at Newbury. Newbury. Now, of course, you, see, you know, that race fell apart to, to, to some degree, but uh, Zanza still won the race uh, well enough, I thought. And, and, and for a novice to win a handicap chase like that, having been beaten so easily by yeah. all mankind, I thought it was very, very good. But you are really just basing all of that judgment just on one run, because I think that on hurdles form, he's not as far clear as maybe that one chase run suggests he is. But I'm going to take a chance that maybe the switch to chasing has uh, brought about massive improvement for all mankind. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I wonder if that was the same Zanza at Warwick that we saw at Newbury last week. Yeah. Uh, back into handicap coming that day. It looked like he was still getting his experience. The worry that I've got, he's never been right-handed. Really? No, not over jump. So that was... A, it's, oh, you're right about what you say about Warwick. Those five boom, 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 boom. If you can go around Warwick as a novice, you should be fine at Sandown. He's going to be some sight to see. I thought Hitman might be the danger. He looks so imperious to me, this four-year-old for Paul Nichols, who's come over. He is owned by Alex Ferguson and Jed Mason, whose colours are also carried by Protector at this season. John, you've got an association with those chaps. How on earth did it come back with the great Sir Alex Ferguson, your association? Oh, that's the Grand National of 2012. And uh, Alex, I hadn't met him. He, he came along with his wife that day, and they were sitting on an adjoining table. And we we got talking, and uh, okay, we went on that day and won the national. Two days later, the phone went, and it was Alec Hook ringing me up to congratulate me on, on winning the national. And um, we've had a close association ever since. Uh, we're good friends, and he's a very, very important partner, as is Jed Mason. They're two great lads, they really are. And it's a pleasure to have them on board in our little syndicate with my daughter, Lisa. Yes, of course, Lisa. Of course, with the dressage world. She's extremely successful in that. You've got four horses to get a protector at being one. What are the other three, John? Oh, uh, protector at uh, Mon Morale, uh, the Kota Warrior, who we'll see at Warwick in a few days' time, and the latest one, Good Ball, that's just come over from France. And that's Paul, Paul Nichols has two, and Dan Skelton has two. I think one of these two trainers will, will have the favourite for this race. El Dorado Allen, of course, before we go to Pat, he's the course winner, isn't he? Flattered by the gumball departure at Cheltenham? I think so. I'm, I, I was on the gumball that day and was fairly disappointed when he came down the second last because I thought he had that race pretty much sewn up and was going to win that race easily. Uh, El Dorado Allen, as you say, probably his best performance over hurdles came at this course. Yeah, yeah. So he, do, he does act well at Sandown. But I do think he's going to have to improve significantly on that run at Cheltenham to be competitive. If the four-year-olds go too hard up front, he might pick up the pieces. Pat Cooney, how do you see this playing out? Well, I was very impressed, uh, like Graham, with uh, all mankind. Uh, he, I mean, he's going to be a treat to watch, isn't he, over the uh, the railway fences if he meets them spot on. But he's no gimme. And it's, there's six runners in this race, and all of them are unbeaten over fences. There's nine wins between them. So he's going to have to earn the victory. You'd be worried wouldn't you, with all mankind if he goes too hard too early. He's got to come up the sand downhill on testing ground. I'm going to stick with him based on what I saw last time out. But look, you can back a Paul Nichols horse, Tamarock de Mathana, eight to one. JP McManus has got the outsider, Phoenix Wave, Harry Fry, one run, one win. He's no gimme by any means. But uh, if you had to pick a winner based on what you saw on Chase debut, I'm happy to take all mankind. But uh, with reservations, I have to say. Mm, fascinating little affair that and informative with the Arkle in mind. 2.25 at Sandown. This is the moment we've been looking forward to here on What Is Shout, and you as well, no doubt. It is one of the jewels in the crown of every jump racing season, the Grade 1 Tingle Creek. John, a race you've got a strong association with. Politolog, he's been there and done it. He is the current champion chaser. He was beaten in this race last year, John. Of course, he won it a couple of years ago. What's the difference been with him of late? He's coming back really strong, isn't he? Uh, yes, well... It was this race last year, and he, the disappointment of his performance that created a major change in the way he was trained and so on, because he bled. So 
if he bled, then I've got to um, say, you know, he had every reason to turn in the performance that he did. I think he was fifth. I think he was fifth. But it was unlike him. So Paul decided to change the way he trained him, give him a complete rest, and you never saw him again until Scotland. And then he was an absolute revelation. He, he came out and he was rocking and rolling. He couldn't wait to start. Uh, he took off. He led from the front. He was very, very impressive. And he has been, touch wood, that way ever since. And Paul's continued to train him uh, the way he does now. And um, I know I saw him down at Ditchit a few weeks ago. I've had a good report on his training and uh, gallops he's been on from Paul. And um, I think he will put in a very good performance. He's a very genuine horse. Was it always the intention to have Harry Skelton continue the association with Harry Cobden taking on Griantine, of course, the young up-and-comer from the stable? Are you a bit surprised he's not ahead of him in the betting, John? Well, please remember, go back two years uh, where we got so close to Altior in the Queen Mother Champion Chase. We really did. And I, coming over the last, I thought we'd probably beat Altior, but Altior then produced a great finish and showed what a class act he really is. So he's going to be the one to beat. Um, I think that um, Harry Skelton, I mean, being given the opportunity, which he wanted in the Queen Mother, gave a magnificent performance of front running. Uh, after that, there's no way he was going to come off that horse. Uh, he'll stay with that ride. He deserved it. He earned the right to do that. So, you know, I'm looking forward to see how they go tomorrow. Well, absolutely. You've been beaten three times by Altior, but let's see if we can pick holes in the great champion chaser, of course, Altior. Um, no 10 year old has won this since. Uh, Moscow Flyer, when he last took out the race. But I think with Altior, we can, we can say he's in the same breath, surely, isn't he, G? Uh, at his best, he's one of the all-time greats, isn't he? Uh, he's right up there. Um, I think he's behind, in recent years, Sprinter Sacra and Masterminded on, on racing post ratings. Uh, I think that's since 2008. But uh, apart from that, he would be third behind those. Um, and that's with a, with a rating of 183 which would be £10 better than, than Politologue's uh, best figure um, so far. However, that was in the 2018 Champion Chase. That was quite a long time ago that Altior produced a 183. And in the last two years, his racing post ratings have regressed um, quite significantly. Yeah. Um, and um, his best figure last year um, was at Newbury. Um, when he over this distance was at Newbury when he won uh, the game Spirit, yeah. uh, he, he ran to one seven three. Now, if you look at the Champion Chase that Politolog ran, now he got a figure of one seven three two. So there's nothing between them if you go on last time out form, um, Altior and Politolog. And and although Altior has got a good, fantastic record, uh, I think he's been beaten just once in sixteen starts over fences. That takes some doing. But you've got to give credit to Politolog as well because if you look in terms of big race achievements and big race wins, there's really not that much between Politolog and Altior. I mean, Altior's got one more champion chase than Politolog, <laughs> but Politolog has won the Tingle Creek before. Altior's won one Tingle Creek, so they're both going for their second Tingle Creek. Obviously, Politolog's also won a grade one um, at Aintree when he beat Min. Um, so in terms of even big race achievements, I think they're a lot more closely matched than the market uh, would suggest. But for me, when I'm looking at the race, it's it's a fascinating tactical race for me, and I can't wait to see how, how Harry Skelton's going to ride this because, to, to my eye, he's got those seven fences down the back straight, and um, I, I can just see him. This is when he's got to try and run the finish out of Altior because we all know that Altior is such a strong finisher, isn't yeah. he? And I'm going to be fascinated to see if he can really get Altior in trouble going down that back straight, coming off maybe the last of those railway fences. Altior often does hit a little bit of a flat spot, and I could easily see Harry Skelton getting getting Altior at it from quite a way out. Now we know coming to the final fence, Altior is going to be powering home because he always is. But can Harry Skelton nick that advantage uh, and make it pay all the way up to line? I think it's a fascinating race, a fascinating battle between two great champions. Uh, and who wins? Uh, I think Altior will win. But if I had to bet, I would probably back Politolog on value grounds. Well, let's go to Pat Cooney on this because the market is starting to go one way, Pat. 
Yeah, it's tending to make Altior more vulnerable. That seems to be the opinion. I mean, he's, he's about five to six at the moment. There may be some hardy souls go evens in the betting ring, maybe. Uh, do you want to lay him or do you want to back him? If you're backing Altior, you're backing horse unbeaten at Sandown, which, you know, he does he does jump to the left a few times. He's the best we've seen for a long, long time. But he comes with the reservations, doesn't he? And you just look at the race, don't you? Politologue, well, as John's alluded to there, if you get the uh, the last time out version of him rock up, then he's a serious player. And the six-year-olds, Green and Teen and Rouge V, now they've got a, a bit to do on the form book. I mean, I was at uh, Musselburgh when Green and Teen won, of our, won our Bet365 race. I didn't think he'd be four to one or five to one to be Altior at levels at the end of the year, but uh, he's obviously got the fitness advantage, as has Rouge V. I just keep coming back to Altior saying, would I back him at evens? Likely win a yes, but I think at prices I'd be more inclined to back Politologue at his four to one based on what I saw last time out. But, you know, if you had to make a decision, I, I, I'd probably think Altior is the most likely winner. But again, at evens, 10 to 11, 5 to 6, you want to be ticking every box and he doesn't quite tick every box for me. So I could see the market going against him, but still being the most likely winner. Oh, this is exciting, isn't it? I'll tell you what, it's a pleasure to be sitting in this seat doing what a shout every week for you guys. And that passionate preview that you got from G-Rod there, the insight from the owner, John Ailes, and the market from Pat Cooney. You won't find a better preview wherever you look. Where are you going? Get your comments in below. Right, time for some heavyweight calls. It's the big calls section. Graham Robber, I'm going to give you the floor. <laughs> well, never, never, never say that I haven't got a madcap theory every now and again, Dave, but... Yeah. Uh, you know, I've got this weird theory, and I've had it for quite a while. I think I said it before, um, that um, grey horses jump better uh, than any others. Um, and and I, I really love grey horses. So often I'll be sitting there, I'll look at a novice chase, you know, and I'll think to myself, oh, yeah, that horse is grey. Oh, that'll probably jump well. Now, I don't know what this is based on. There's no absolute solid evidence. I'm not one of these people who says, oh, right, I've got to bang out 50 million stats just to prove that I'm right. It's just a hunch and just an inkling. Um, but I, I just go back down the years and look at all the great jumpers. You know, Desi was grey. One Man was grey. Teton Mill was grey. Neptune Collonge was grey. And I just think to myself, they're such a small amount compared to the rest of the horse population, aren't they? Greys compared to the whole population as a, of horses as a whole, they must be massively uh, overachieving in the jumping stakes. And I, as soon as I started to think of greys, and I think I started to think of great greys, John Howes just came to mind. And I thought, well, John must agree with me because look at how many great greys John has owned in the past. So I just wanted to ask John, have, is there, is there a, a strategy? Do you, when you're going to buy a horse, John, do you think, oh, yeah, that horse is grey. I must go out and buy a grey horse. Is that why you've had so many in the past? Um, well, it looks that way. I certainly love greys. Yeah, I do. If I saw two horses that I thought were equal on merit, one was a bay and one was a grey, I'd buy the grey. Um, it goes back to the day, I think, when I first bought one man at the Arthur Stevenson dispersal sale. I, there's just something about, about him, you know. Um, and, of course, I've been lucky with Grace ever since. Uh, I don't think I've had a bad one. Uh, they've all been very good. Um, I can't say that Grace are always better jumpers than any other colour. That, I think that, that would be wrong. But um, certainly I do like Grace. Um, one of the reasons they're very easy to follow in a race. Um, you don't need those binoculars. You can see them. Uh, very easily. Uh, no, I just love Grace. Always have done. You, you heard it here first. John Howes agrees with my madcap theory that grey horses make better jumpers. I think you're fine, Graham, actually. If you just go back slightly, he actually disagrees with you. <laughs> I'm pretty sure he did. Well, I'm, I'm, take, I'm taking that as an agreement. I can see what you're trying to do here. You're trying to prove yourself <laughs> the biggest fan of Azerty, apparently, <laughs> by getting him with our guess and currying favour. Pat Cooney, your big call. Yeah, uh, nothing to do with greys, but uh, I was more interested in asking uh, John about uh, the, you know, the going forward for the sport, really, in terms of uh, prize money and sponsorship. Investec are pulling out of the Epsom Derby. Magnus are pulling out of the uh, Cheltenham Gold Cup in 2022. There's prize money's issues and so forth. And I just wondered, to, I wanted to ask John, does there come a point when the risk just isn't worth the reward, maybe, if the prize money is lower in, in future years? Oh, that's a big question. Um, he would never 
irrespective of prize money, he would never stop my love of the sport, that's for sure. And I get as much fun out of, I get far more fun out of winning than I do out of receiving the prize money because it's the thrill of winning. It's, um, uh, I, I think all this goes back to one horse that nobody's mentioned. Uh, when I first started to get interested in racing, and that was Desert Orton. I thought he was unbelievable. Uh, I, that, that's when I fell in love with Grace, I'm sure he was. I thought when he used to run in the King George at Kempton, it was unbelievable. Just watching him taking on those fences and his style of jumping, everything about him. I, I probably will say something stupid and say, well, I've never seen a day horse jump like that. I probably haven't. Um, I'm trying to think. Denman was, yeah, he was close to that. Um, but certainly it was Desert Orchid that I fell in love with. Oh, God, he is agreeing with you. Brilliant, brilliant. Unbelievable scene. Thanks for that, John. All right, time for my big call. We'll have some heavyweight calls for you. I hope you're enjoying them. My big calls. I've been, I watch a lot of all weather racing. Going completely off tack. I watch a lot of all weather racing. I and, you, and, and you backed all the greys. <laughs> no, I don't mind. <laughs> I can't remember last grey that won on the all weather racing, but, or, or that I backed. But actually, it might help us. It, 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 actually, we need to be policing the all weather racing. Some of the jockeys out there, the standard of the riding on the, on the all weather is is quite scary. This week, a, a lot's been said about it. Um, there was an incident in Lingfield, wasn't there? Some horses came off of it. There's some jockeys out there. It, it, the BHA need to do a little bit about it. Something will go wrong at some point, and this is not what racing needs at the minute. I watched a race at Wolverhampton in the week, and it, it was, I mean, Dodgems doesn't even cover it. Um, you watch back some of the racing this week uh, uh, around those tight bends. Even at Chelmsford up the home straight, some jockeys are carving them up. There's will to win, but not at all costs. And it's, it's, there's something bubbling up here. I'm worried about it. But bully boy or weather riding, was there? It? it was once coined by, by, by a great trainer. Um, I, I think it obviously comes down partly to the fact that um, everyone wants to be on the inside, don't they? A lot of those all weather tracks are very tight, aren't it's completely they? Completely the wrong place to be as well on the inside. <laughs> as I keep trying to tell these jockeys, particularly in the straight. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but I mean, look at look at these all weather tracks: Lingfield, Chelmsford, Kempton. Real tight, tr tight yeah. turns, and, and jockeys just don't want to be going three or four wide. And like you say, I mean, they're just trying to do the best for their horse, for their owners, for their trainer. Yeah. But like you said, there's got to be a little bit of common sense there. We don't want to be seeing anyone get injured. Yeah, absolutely. And like I say, there's an accident waiting to happen there. There are your big goals for this week. Right then, final big race preview here for you domestically. 2.40 at entry on Saturday. The Many Clouds Chase, remembering the great national winner, of course, the late Many Clouds, Oliver Show. Really good race this year. Uh, Santini looks like he's going to go off fav. Uh, Native River won the won the race last season, didn't he? Now a ten year old. Frodo on in there as well. Quick line about who's going to win and why. Oh, it's a really tough race, isn't it? Because there's not a lot between uh, the top two. Certainly for me, the top two in form are Santini and Native River, um, and there, there's not uh, that much between them on racing post ratings uh, at these terms. Um, I'm not entirely sure this track will suit. Santini ideally I know he won over the course over hurdles but he's a real strong stayer and a big mm. bull of a horse and it's quite a tight track isn't it Aintree and I know a lot of people thought he was the moral winner didn't they of the, of the Gold Cup because he flew home didn't he after uh, off of quite uh, steady fractions I'm not quite in that camp because I think that when you've got a dual winner uh, like Al Bunfoto, it takes a really special to win two Gold Cups. I have a feeling that Al Bunfoto might well have won that race no matter how it was run but nevertheless Santini Ran a huge race in the Gold Cup. If he runs to that level again, he will win. But I'm not entirely certain he will. It's not quite the the fan base for Santini that we were expecting earlier in his career when he went over. Uh, you know, as an obvious chase, he's never been beaten first time out. Do you remember at Sandown in that intermediate chase with, uh, that Nicky likes to win when it might bite on the lights over the years? He scraped home from a horse, didn't he? That he was two stone yeah. clear off or whatever. Um, Stuart Edmonds' horse, whose name escapes me at the minute. But I th I'm hearing more positive vibes about him, I think. I think he's the right favourite. Jeremiah McGrath, huge ride for him. He's one from one on him. Uh, I hope they're positive with him. Because I think I think he, 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 I think this could How positive can they be with Native River in the race though? And, and Frodon. Frodon. Let's go to John Hales on this. Frodon, Tom Segal, the great price wise tipster. He's in sizzling form. He put Frodon up for the King George in his price wise column this week, John. Can Frodon now step up to the Gold Cup division? He's got to uh, improve as most horses have got to do. But I mean, he, he's he got the basics. Yes, he could get there. 
Mm, interesting. You think the ground might be an issue for him as well, John, do you? Well, no, it's funny. In the programme, I thought, what, what is the one thing you've missed this morning? And that's the ground. Because talking about tomorrow, the lot's going to make that ground change. Uh, it will have a tremendous effect on the Froden race and will affect the outcome of the race. I'm pretty sure of that. Mm, OK, so Native River, he, he, he will be the one that will slog it out. Pat Cooney, Santini going to go off a strong fav and are you with him? Uh, he'll go a favourite for sure, be based on his second in the Cheltenham Gold Cup. But uh, I, I think back to his reappearance at Sandown last year. Now McGinty was the, was the horse he beat that day. And he took all day trying to go past him. And he, he just looked a slow, in need of the run type horse. Connections have always said he's a massive force, stuffy, hard to get fit. They do seem a bit more optimistic about his chances first time up this time around. But if he's going to be beaten, it'll be first time out. And as John just touched on there, the ground's going to be testing enough for them all, particularly if you haven't run for 260 odd days. Same again with Native River. He's not run for 300 days. I'm going to go with Frode, and he has a recent win, of course. He won 42 days ago. Again, I agree spot on with John. You'd rather good ground for him, but he has won on soft ground. He's got fitness. I'm sure Bryony Frost will give him a canny ride. Yes, Santini, the best horse in the race, but uh, not tomorrow. I'll tell you what, this is a race that's going to polarise opinions. And what a treat, the 240, many clouds chase. Punctious Town on Sunday across the Irish Sea go we. For the 140, grade one action. Again, you're being spoiled. It's the John Durgan. Last year's winner, Min, due to make his reappearance here. Now, we're recording early G at the time, but Willie Mullins, I think we can agree, holds the key to the race. If they all turned up, Mellon, just nutted by Sam Crow, also in the five-day decks, that could be something. Min comes back, of course. Shaq and Bossoir and Alaho. Alaho, where does he go? Yeah, it's always a fantastic race, this, isn't it? Every year. And um, Alaho, he looked good, didn't he, when he finished, was it second or yeah. third in the in the RSA? I always forget because Champ just comes from nowhere, doesn't he? And, but, um, yeah, he jumped and travelled like a really good horse and looked like this sort of trip would be ideal for him. Uh, he's obviously not a min, though, is he? Uh, how good is min? Oh, uh, probably one of the most underrated horses yeah. in training in Ireland for me. Uh, he got his uh, deserved Cheltenham victory last yeah. year, and, and he's won a host of grade one races, including this one, of course. This is Dream in there as well. Should come on for the Down Royal race. Of course, battle over Doyen, Gordon Elliott, Sam Crow. Could he bounce back? Some racing prospect, Pat Cooney. Absolutely. Well, what I would say is that the market usually finds the winner for us all. So I wouldn't worry about what's running. The last 10 runnings of this race, the winner, the biggest prize winner has been five to two. So uh, as I say, the market usually gets it right. It is a fascinating race. I like the look of Chris's dream personally. I think the three miles last time may have been just a bit too far. Dropped down to two and a half. Has the recent run. Ticks a lot of boxes for me. But Min won this race the last two years in a row. I think we're going to get a good Ryan Air pointer for the race, but uh, that's, a, that's a worrying stat for a bookmaker, isn't it? The, the biggest price winner is five to two in the last 10 years. Happy days. <laughs> a Sunday sizzler, the John Durkin at 140. <laughs> right then, time to bring in the guys at myracing.com. Check out their website for expert analysis and tips. It's their double, and they're going in the 150. The Henry VIII, Hitman, I like his chances, and I'm agreeing with them again. It's only Santini in the Many Clouds chase. Right then, weekend winners. Graham Rob White, come to you again. Yeah, mine is Springtown Lake, who runs in the Grand Sefton chase at Aintree. It's the 315. Uh, this also my eye looks an ideal uh, type for, for this race. He, he looks perfect for the Grand National Fences. He's a real strong traveller, travels really nicely for his races and usually has no problem holding a prominent position, which is always very important over the National Fences. And as John has already said, another important factor for the National Fences is you've got to be a natural jumper. And the one thing that Springtown Lake is, is a natural jumper. So mm. it's Springtown Lake in the 315 Aintree. Yeah, it was a good comeback, wasn't it? I'm going to stick at Aintree as well. The 210 race is a listed juvenile fillies race. And uh, Stuart Edmonds has got one here called Megan. I know one of the owners of this. It absolutely hosed up on its British debut over jumps at Leicester. They thought it was a weak race, the owners, but the fourth came out and hosed up at Market Race, and that was on Thursday. She is a class above this lot, let me tell you, Megan. She'll be short, but well worth it. Pat Cooney, a weekend winner, please. Yeah, it's ironic, really. We've been talking for most of the show about uh, the, the joys of natural jumpers. I'm actually going for a horse who fell last time out, which is slightly against the theme of the show. I'm off to Chepstow for the 157, a horse called Secret Reprieve, number 10. Horse of Evan Williams, yet to win over fences, but was uh, travelling like a winner to me when he uh, when he fell at Haydock two weeks ago. Um, it's, it's only got 
10.13, a mark of 1.30, soft ground, Evan Williams. It, it looks a horse that's well handicapped to me, so secret reprieve for me for my money. OK, and let's finish up then the weekend winners with John Hales. I think I know where you're going to go, John Politolog. The more rain, the better. Yes. Um, you've got to remember, he's a genuine two and a half miler. The day that he beat me in at Aintree showed that. And I think uh, the softer the ground, uh, more con and with the conditions like that, his chances improve. And uh, yeah, I, I can't wait to see. He'll get, he needs to be a two. The horses in that race tomorrow will need to be two and a half milers. There you are, the final word then, politologue for the Tingle Creek. The champion chaser, he's back out. And John's already given you a tip, don't forget, looking into his crystal ball for the 2022 Gold Cup. Pat Cooney, if you want a prize on Protector at, get crunching away. He wins the race. Sadly, that's all we've got time then here for on What A Shout. Absolute pleasure. Real, honestly, John, thank you for, for taking the time to speak to us this week. Good luck tomorrow. You're going down to Sandown. Harry's driving you down there. Yes. Quarter to nine with Lee Shropshire, and uh, he's, he's driving me, and um, we'll have a great day. Thanks, John. Uh, uh, unbelievable insight, really. Uh, it honestly was. And when he gets over the last in front, John, just curb those celebrations slightly, won't you? Uh, Graham Robway, thank you for coming back. Yeah, uh, great to be back um, after a little hiatus, and um, just a shame that I can't join John down at Sandown tomorrow, one of my favourite fixtures of the whole year, but it's great, isn't it? Well, at least we've got some fans in, you know, for the first time this year on a big Saturday, we're going to have 2,000 fans, is it, in yeah. attendance? And it'll be great to have everyone back. What a spectacle it's going to be. Pat Cooney, where will you be this weekend watching all the action? Well, I'll be at home, actually, but uh, I no other place I'd rather be than Sandown. The Sandown roar seems like a lifetime ago, doesn't it, since we last heard it? But uh, good luck to John with uh, Politolo and all the runners tomorrow. Great to have Alti or back as well. And, of course, Aintree as well over the national fences. I think uh, safest place to be is in the armchair riding, riding in these races. Thanks, Pat. What a fantastic show then. What a fantastic weekend it is. Don't forget safe gambling. That's what we do tell you here at the Racing Post. It is RMO. Loads of races. Take your time. Target in. And, of course, don't forget to download the free Racing Post app. You can do that on the App Store or the Google Play Store. Most importantly, if you're one of the lucky ones out there at the track, enjoy yourselves. Otherwise, put your feet up and enjoy the sport.